everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly. Today we're going to do a mid-year review. I'm going to take you through what I've been using so far this year in 2023. Planners, journals, a few favorites, and a few duds. I may need to revise a few things going forward in the next six months of the year. This year, um, back in one of the very first videos I made, we talked about the planners and journals that I was going to use in 2023. The first one I want to talk about is the planner that I use the most. It is the one I use for work, so it doesn't show up on the channel very often, and it is the Jaboon Techo. Now I have in this cover the Jaboon uh, Biz and the days. I was a little concerned at first utilizing this for 2023 because the year prior I'd used the Hobonichi Techo Cousin which is an A5. Now this is an A5 Slim I think is what they called it and it is narrower by a little bit than the Hobonichi and it really did have an effect on particularly the weeks which are done in a vertical columns I did, wasn't sure if it would provide enough space for what I needed it to do, but it's been working out great. This is the biz. This is the one that has the weekly and the monthly setups in it, and it goes for a full year. Now, I also, because I couldn't decide and I wasn't going to have the daily pages like I did in the Hobonichi, I was worried about having another place to put down thoughts more than just like the list of to-dos but actual thoughts on each day so I bought the daily as well this is the Jibun Techo days and it is only for six months so I will be swapping this out for the next six months which will run July through December I'll address a few things in this but I'm not going to show you a whole lot of this because it is work related and the names have not been changed to protect the innocent or the not so innocent. I was also going to use the Hobonichi Techo A5 Cousin to film on YouTube. This was the one that I was going to use to do fancy page spreads and journal with me's and plan with me's in. So I have this one as well. This is an Avec, which means it only goes six months and then I'm going to have to swap this out also to start July. So those were the two main planners that I had. I also have a few journals. The first one I want to show you is this one, the Midori Five Year Diary. I've kind of surprised myself a little bit how regularly I'm using this. I was a little worried that I would use it at first and then it would fall off and then I couldn't catch up. But I have consistently used this every day. Um, sometimes I've had to back journal a couple of days, but I've allowed myself to do that if I felt like it. And so far, I have done pretty well. I've journaled every day except for one day. I don't know what happened that day. I found the trick to using this is to not put it away, is to have it within arm's reach of the place that you spend a lot of your downtime in your home. I put this next to the couch where I would sit down to watch TV in the evenings. I would just put it on the end table. Usually I kept a little, I kept a pen propped in there for the next day and that's where I went to unwind for a little bit after work so I would naturally just kind of pick that up it's towards the end of the day and I would jot down a few notes having this in sight because out of sight out of mind right having this within arm's reach was key to using this every day that's been going very well the next few journals are ones that I don't necessarily use every day but they're definitely in the rotation the first one is the Hobonichi original in an A6. Now this is the day free and I use this to record one of my other hobbies, uh, fountain pen collecting. So I use this to record what I have currently inked, 
any maintenance or purchases that I've made that involve fountain pens or stationery. And when I can receive those orders, gosh, that was a great month. I had a lot of things that I bought. Boy, that was exciting. Oh, it's Christmas. That's what it was. I'm buying stuff for other people. Okay. I was like, wow, that was fun. My goals with collecting as well as, you know, I use it as a little swatch book. I write about new pens. I test out new inks. I did the 30 inks, 30 days challenge in here. So this has been fun, but it's as needed. The next journal is one that I use sporadically. It has a structure that I've really come to like. It is my reading journal, or technically it's a book journal. My Reading Life by Anne Bogle. She is the creative mind behind a vlog called The Modern Mrs. Darcy. I suggest you check that out if you enjoy reading. She always has a lot of good reading recommendations. So far I'm doing pretty well. Um, we're halfway through the year and I've already read, well, technically this does include DNFs. The books that I did not finish because they were fucking awful. But not very many. The overwhelming number are ones that I have finished and I'm up to 49 so far and I still have a couple that I need to list. But each of them has their own page dedicated and then you can flip through the index. So I purchased and started this, as you can see, on January 1st of this year, and this is also going very well. Sometimes if I find a book that I have very much enjoyed and want to write more about it than this little space right here provides, then I will do a spread in my, the Hobonichi Techo that I just showed you, the cousin. I'll do a spread in that so that I can record some more in-depth thoughts. And I've done a couple of journal with me videos uh, over those books. So that's been very successful. Then there is the stack that it's either very specific to a certain type of journaling or a very specific time frame for journaling. Some of these will look familiar to you if you've watched previous videos. I have my little A9 size art collage journal that if you've watched any of my shorts videos I do a few of these as well where I put these put these together this one's almost full or about as full as it's going to be able to hold comfortably I can probably stretch it for a couple more pages a couple more videos of this and that one will be retired. That is just fun. That's just the fun little quickie extracurricular activity when I feel particularly, <laughs> for me, particularly artistic. I'm not artistic, but I can collage with the best of them. I had this year, and you guys probably have seen this. This should look familiar. I've done a couple of videos over this. First the unboxing, and then I did a flip through of the Scotland trip that I took. This insert right here is completed. That is on my Scotland trip that I took in March, so that's done. But then I had a leftover insert that I just kind of put together for, you know, just a few little random stickage. Uh, this has no schedule. This has no, no real purpose except for being a place where if I have a few stickers that I want to put down and a few words that I want to journal about but doesn't need anything in depth and it's just kind of super casual, this is going to be like seriously no pressure situation. I'm just going to pick that up whenever I feel like it. And then I have this guy. And it's unfortunate that I haven't done more work in here, but I haven't been doing a lot of creative writing. I'm trying to get back into that, particularly starting in July. I am going to really rededicate some time to my creative writing efforts. This one was my master lists, master lists, ideas, and plans for world domination. And it needs, it needs to see some love. As if that stack wasn't enough, I added a journal. I added this guy. This is a cover I bought from one of those random 
websites. I think it was AliExpress or so, something like that. It's a it's a lovely suede leather cover. That of course was super cheap. That's one of the benefits of those sites. It is filled with a Midori insert in the grid pattern. I've been journaling a little bit in this already, but not very consistently because I plan to, in July, as part of my kickoff to getting my creative writing back up where it needs to be, I am going to attempt to do morning pages. Ugh, mornings. Yeah, I don't know how successful I'm gonna be with this, guys, because uh, mornings are great. The only downside to mornings is that they come so early, God. I'm gonna try very hard to do morning pages in accordance with, in case you're not sure what that means. Morning pages are just basically like a brain dump. They're a free writing exercise. Julia Cameron uh, is an author. She wrote a very famous book, The Artist's Way. And as part of her program, she recommends morning pages. Sitting down, doing a brain dump where you just keep the pen moving, Two full pages minimum? We'll see. Anyway, I bought this in order to give that a shot and I am going to try to do morning pages in July in this journal. So this sucker is gonna see a lot more action than it has so far. Now, for what's working and what's not working for me. This is working great for what it needs to do, which is basically corral all my work tasks and some of my personal agenda in here in one place where I can go and be like, ooh, what's in the lineup today? What do I need to get done? Who do I need to have lunch with? What am I supposed to be doing after work? Do I have a grocery list in here on a post-it note? And it's been great. I don't know why the Jaboon doesn't get more love, but this is a great little planner. What's not working? is the days portion of this. Now, I am going to use the next six month insert. I'm going to put it in here. And I think it's because I went in being like, oh, it doesn't really have a purpose. I'll put random thoughts down if I need to. And it really, it just didn't get used very much. I mean, I won't say it didn't get used at all because it did, but it did not get used as thoroughly as it should have. None of these pages got used. This got used very sporadically and then pff, not at all. The daily pages again very sporadically and then not at all. I think what I'm going to do with the next six months is use this specifically for YouTube ideas, scheduling for filming, editing. I think what it lacks is a true specific purpose. We'll see how that goes. Another thing with this journal, something that had worked before in the Hobonichi that I tried to transfer into utilizing in this that didn't work, was using these little brassy colored index tabs on the pages. These things would not stay put. As you can tell, this one's all jacked up. It's bent. It got sucked up in the vacuum cleaner. I couldn't get these to stay on the page. I don't know that the paper, maybe the paper is too slick or too thin. I can't imagine that it was thinner than the Hobonichi because these things worked great in the Hobonichi, but not in the Jaboon. I've probably lost a whole packet of these things since the beginning of the year. And I loved them so much in the Hobonichi for marking where the calendar was for that current month and the page for the weekly spread that I was using so that I could flip to it very quickly. They worked great for that. Not this year. So instead, I'm using these little page flags. This came in an ink journal subscription box. It's the great writers. These are adorable. Who wouldn't want Poe, Jane Austen, Emily Dickinson, or Oscar Wilde's little face poking out on the edge of their planner like so? That works much better than those Midori brass tabs do. Another thing that is working out really well in this setup is this cover. This cover from Bassey & Co. is 
wondrous. It is so great. And it's getting a little bit more character to it. As you can see, it's, you know, taking on a nice, nice patina of wear and tear. It is thoroughly delightful and one of my favorite things this year. Another thing with this that isn't working are these little are these little paper tabs for the month. First of all, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. They are probably uh, wonderful, but as you can tell, they they definitely stick out beyond the cover because I've got more inserts packed in here than it should probably reasonably be expected to hold. So they have suffered a lot of wear and tear. And I don't think I would do these paper ones again anytime soon. They've taken a beating. Another thing that I found didn't work very well in this slimmer format is the use of stickers in spreads. Even the teeny tiny ones that I bought. Uh, these are just functional planning stickers from Sweet Freckled Designs. It's no fault of theirs, but I just, I didn't like the way it looked. It really cluttered up the space. I don't know, there was just something about these, uh, about using stickers in this that just didn't, it just didn't work for me. What I found myself doing, which was really fun, was to do a little doodle instead. And I'll show you an example of what I would do. I would do a little doodle instead. Like for instance, I would doodle in when I would draw a short versus a full length video. I would do a little doodle for next to a TV show that I was anticipating. Anyway, that was really fun. I found myself enjoying that a lot. I am no artist. They definitely look like they're done by a three year old, but it added character to this journal. Now, as a bonus, just to talk about a few favorites and a few flops. The first favorite is this pen case. This is a rickshaw pen case called 8-Bit Inventory. This is, I think this is exclusive to Goulet pens. So if you're interested in that, that is where you need to look to find this pen case. The dud, however, is also from rickshaw also purchased from Goulet Pens. Not any fault of theirs, not any fault of theirs. I didn't read the description. This is a pen koozie called Fire and Dice and I bought it because I am a big analog gamer, board gamer. I love old school RPGs, Dungeon and Dragons. And maybe you can't tell it from here until I have something to compare it to. When I ordered it, I did not look at the description thoroughly enough and I did not realize that it was smaller than the one that I'd already had. It is also a dual pin cozy with a gray liner. So when I realized that, I was like, oh no, because I had specific pens that I really wanted to put in this, but they poked out the top. For what I was expecting, that was a dud, even though I kept it because I love the design and I found pens that I can put in it. Sailor Pro Gear Slim fits perfectly well in here. Uh, any of the Coveco Sports, of course, or the smaller pens, but anything like a Bennu or a Pilot Vanishing Point, a Lamy, yeah, it pokes out the top. So I would say for what I was expecting, it was a dud, even though in reality, I'm making it work for me. Another dud was the fact that I tried to do a no buy or a no spend <laughs> for the month of June. I was successful probably up until yesterday and then I went a little crazy and I bought a bunch of stationery. My no spend, no buy was specifically targeted towards any stationery. No paper, no pens, no more journals, no stickers, no washi, none of that. Couldn't buy it needed to stay off the websites and then I had something happen and I needed some retail therapy so it didn't work out. I blew it. However, during the time that I did it, I was able to save quite a bit of money and I may have some tips later on once I complete a successful no spend month 
and I'm gonna do this every so often because I need to shop my stash. I need to shop my stash. I have so much stuff that I am just simply not using. So I'm going to attempt that again. So it was a favorite, but it was also a dud because I, I completely failed at it. I'm going to do No Spend November, and I'm thinking I need to do one more, probably in September. So I'll do September and November before the end of the year as no spend months when it comes to any stationery or new books. Books are included in that, by the way. Another one of my favorites, and this was this one snuck up on me. It's a writing implement, and it isn't a fountain pen. Shocker! I know. It is this lovely number, and it's by Tactile Turn. I got it off of Jet Pens, and it is called Deep Space. I have been so happy with this purchase. Um, it's got a little bit of... Can you hear that? It's got a little texture on it. But it is a lovely pen and one that has the most satisfying mechanism for clicking. But it's when it's retracted. Woohoo! Man, that sounds good. And it's a great pen. It's a good way. It's hefty because it is metal throughout. Wow. I'm just, I just love this pen more and more when I use it. It's so pretty. And I've been using this a lot for journaling too because I've got the 0 0.38 gel pen refill in it. So it writes very, very fine. And I've been using it in my Jivoon uh, planner. Works great. One of the duds, however, that I was very excited to try but it just didn't work for me, was this pen from Paper Skater. I got this on Gold Spot and it was on sale and I thought it was so pretty because it came in a variety of colors and I was really taken with this orange color that it came in. And what this is, is it's a fountain pen, but it actually itself is not the pen. This is a disposable fountain pen in here, and you can take it out. Now I have it um, with its proprietary disposable fountain pen insert in it because it fits so neatly. And this is like aluminum. It's very, very light. It is very pretty, but it feels like it would be very easily scratched. It's got some texture. I don't know if you can see it here, but I didn't particularly care for that. This grip, even though it's fairly smooth, it does have ridges. And in my power grip straight, it's kind of uncomfortable. And if you don't buy the proprietary disposable pen insert, you can use the Pilot Varsity in this as well. It comes with this little tab that you put in the back because the Varsity is much shorter than the proprietary refill. I don't particularly like disposable fountain pens, so I'm not sure what I was thinking with this, but unfortunately, it's just, it's a dud because it's just not for me. Not because it doesn't work exactly how it should, because it works exactly how it should, but it's just, it's not for me. So it's a good thing I didn't spend a whole lot on this. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you spending some time here. Hopefully going forward, and all of us get a chance to do a six month reset, a do over for the remainder of the year. See you back here next week. Bye now.